So now we're going to uh, make a number of uh, DT graphs and VT graphs to kind of match up the two graphs and see how one graph um, looks if we're looking at the other graph or, and vice versa. So in order to do that, we're going to make six examples. So let's look at example two. Um, so in example two, all I would like to do all I would like to do with in example two is to simply look at that uh, example where we have a non-zero uh, initial displacement. Remember that regardless of the initial displacement, the VT graph is going to look the same. In other words, I could draw any number, thousands and thousands of uh, parallel lines here that all have the same velocity, and they'll look exactly the same over here. So if I drew a line here, or here, or here, it would still look exactly the same because the slope of the line is the same. All parallel lines have the same slope. And so their VT graphs all look identical. Okay. Um, the second example that I would like to look at is, and in this case, we're going to draw the graph just a little bit different. Um, what I want to do is I want to include a negative axis and I will do the same for the now when you draw a graph of this nature you don't want to draw the label for the axis down here because it's, it's going to actually be in the graph where we're looking so I'm going to draw the T out to the side and we're going to have uh, positive V over here and negative V over here, negative X down here, and positive X right there. And all I would like to do is to draw a, a position time graph or displacement time graph in which the slope is going downward. Okay, And I, I'm sure that all of you are, are very adept at being able to calculate a negative slope, but then how does that graph look over here? Well if the velocity, or I should say the slope, were negative, then that means that the velocity was negative. All that simply means is that you're traveling in the direction that's opposite to the positive. So instead of traveling to the north, like we might have been in this example, we're traveling to the south. Instead of traveling to the east, as we were with this one, we're traveling to the west. Okay, so the, the slope is given a negative value, and it seems like a very different graph, but it really just indicates the direction is different. The direction is different. Now, how does it look down here? Well, obviously, if we have a negative slope, and the negative slope is the velocity, then that means that we have a negative velocity. So if we have a position time graph that has a downward or a negative slope, then we're going to find that we're going to have the VT graph graphing in the negative portion. That also means that this area That also means that the area is going to be a negative area. That makes sense because we are getting a negative displacement. That is to say that if, for example, we took here's our final displacement and here was our initial displacement, well, that would be zero minus some positive number, which means that my displacement would be negative. That makes sense. I am traveling in the negative direction. So I would expect any change in my displacement to also be negative. So it makes sense that the area down here will be negative. And why is the area down here negative? Because the velocity is negative. I have a negative V times a positive T, which is going to give me a negative delta X. So the, the two graphs match each other. You just have to think about how does the, the negative slope over here impact over here? And do I get, is it consistent? If I get negative for one value, do I get negative for the other? And it does work out. All right, so we've looked at positive, we've looked at negative. Now let's look at combinations of positive, negative, or possibly even no motion at all. So for example four, 
we'll keep it a little simple. Not putting any units in here. Doesn't really matter what the units are. Uh, we're really just uh, concerned, sorry, about the shape, the shape of the graph. Okay, so let's take a look at a, a motion like this. Let's say, for example, that I travel with a constant velocity so this might be I, I just walked out of my house and I am walking along the sidewalk to the east in the positive direction but suddenly I, re I realize that I forgot something and I need to go back so I might and you might imagine that when you forget something it's it's very common that you actually go back faster than you were walking in the in the first place because now we're we realize that we're going to be a little bit late so I might have an even steeper slope to walk back so I'm walking in the positive direction with a positive velocity as indicated by the positive slope and then suddenly I realize that I forgot something I need to go back so I hurry back, I jog back, I have negative uh, displacement and negative velocity because I'm going in the backwards direction. And we will say that this occurs at T1. At some time, called T1, I realize that I need to go back. And so that's the point at which my, my velocity changes. Well, and realize this is kind of simple, you know, I, it's unlikely that I would instantaneously turn around and head back, but just to make the graph a little bit simpler and, and easier for you to follow, we're going to use very sharp uh, edges to this thing. So initially what happened was I was walking with some velocity until I reached the time that we call T1. At T1, I suddenly started going backwards. I had negative velocity. Now, this is a little unrealistic, but we are assuming that we instantaneously changed and notice that my velocity was faster. It was steeper on the negative direction than it was in the positive direction. So that means that this line should go down even further and then I would see my my negative velocity. So here's where I see my positive velocity corresponding to this portion of the graph. Then I start to travel in the negative direction so I instantly move down and begin moving with a greater velocity in the negative direction and that change occurred at T1. Okay, um, Let's make it even a little more complicated. So let's say in this example, example five, that we start off by moving relatively steeply in the negative direction. We'll flatline this a little bit. Then we'll move like this. Okay. So before we go on and, and think about what the VT graph is, let's just think about, just verbally, think to yourself what is happening with the motion of this, this object. If you need to pause the, the video in order for you to take just a few moments to, for yourself to verbally describe the motion that this object is making. So you can see because of the negative slope here that clearly this object is traveling in the negative direction. It has negative velocity. So we might be traveling south or to the west or down, for example. Um, then there is a brief period of time during which there is no motion at all. It's not that it's constant velocity. That's true. It is constant velocity. But the velocity is zero. Remember, the slope of this line is the velocity. So when the slope is zero, the velocity is zero. The slope on the displacement time graph is the velocity. When the slope is zero, the velocity is zero. So the person walks backwards for a short time. Maybe they sit on a park bench for a little while. Then they walk back 
in the forward direction, suddenly turn around and start walking at a very slow rate. Notice that this line is much more shallow than these two. It's negative, but it's not as steep as this one. It's not as steep as this one was in the positive direction. And so they walk very slowly in the backwards direction. Maybe somebody was walking to a park bench, which was to the west of where they work. They sat on the park bench for a little while. They walked back to work, but then realized that they had forgotten something back at the park bench, and so they slowly walked back to the park bench to get whatever they, they had lost. Let's think about what that looks like on the VT graph. So on the VT graph, we start off initially with a negative velocity. That means that we're going to start off somewhere down here and have a negative velocity. Then the velocity changes to no velocity, zero. Then the velocity becomes positive about the same positive that we had in the negative. So we'll go up about the same. And then our velocity went negative again. So we're going to come all the way down here, but not quite as far. This is not as, as negative of a velocity as our initial was. And this would how this is the way that it would look. Now, if you think about it, during this first section, we were just we were um, causing a negative dis excuse me negative displacement. That's what we have here: a negative area, negative displacement. Then we have a time in which there is no change in our displacement. That's exactly what we're going to get here. Notice there's no area underneath this line. I'm neither above the x-axis or below the x-axis, so there is zero area, zero area, zero change in displacement. Then I have a positive velocity as shown by the positive slope. So now I have a positive velocity up here, and while I'm, occur I'm incurring positive velocity, I'm getting a positive displacement. The area of this uh, rectangle is a positive area. Then I go back to my negative velocity, and then in this portion right here, I will have some negative displacement, which is obviously what happens when you walk backwards. You accumulate negative displacement. Okay, let's take a look at just two more examples. Let's say example five. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. Let's first of all start off with a flat line. Then we'll take a negative change in displacement, followed by a slightly less steep positive change in displacement. No change in displacement, a negative change in displacement, a positive change in displacement. How does that look on the VT graph? Well, when there was no change in displacement, that looks like a horizontal line running along the x-axis. Then I had a negative displacement, so I would find that I suddenly moved down here, and it was, it was pretty steep, so I have a pretty significant. Note that this, these uh, vertical lines don't represent any motion occurring. It's just simply jumping from the zero velocity to the instantaneously, essentially, to the negative velocity. And then I see that I have a positive velocity, but the positive velocity is not as great as the negative velocity. In other words, it's not as steep. If it were like this, then we would have a, a line that was equally as steep. And so we finish off here with a relatively slow positive velocity. Let's do one last example, and let's do this one in reverse. So that is to say, I'll make the VT graph, and let's see what the, the DT graph looks like. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's start with the VT graph. Let's start off with a VT graph that looks something like this. We'll travel for some time with a positive velocity. We will then travel with a negative velocity. And finally, we will end up with a very large positive velocity. So I had a positive velocity, then turned around and went backwards with a negative velocity, then turned around and went forward again, but at a faster rate than I was traveling before. Faster velocity than I was traveling before. So how is that going to look? Now one thing you know for you to note, to note, remember that there's no way for you with the VT graph to know what your initial position was. So if you don't know what your initial position is, then we'll just assume that at time equals zero that we must have been at the origin. That's our right to always choose where the origin is going to be. So I'm going to start my graph right here. And a positive slope to represent the positive velocity here. Then I had a negative velocity, but I want you to notice that here's how high the positive velocity was, here's how low the negative velocity was. Not as low as this one was. So if I were to make an equally steep line, it would go something like this, but I don't want an equally steep line. I want a line to be a little more shallow to represent the fact that the velocity was not quite as fast in the negative direction as it was in the positive direction. So not quite as steep. Here's an equally steep uh, velocity, so a little shallower. Then I turned around and started traveling in the positive direction again, but in this case it was with greater velocity than the original one, so I'm going to want the line to be steeper. And so that's how this VT graph looks compared to our uh, first VT graph.